My thoughts are that it's impressive, um, you know, as from a design perspective, that he was able to get it um, into a one minute production cycle. That is, you know, very impressive. Um, I understand a lot of uh, thought and engineering needs to go into taking something that is from sheet form and then you're having the right amounts of folds in it so that it can take the right kind of load uh, on there, um, which means that, you know, you need to have the right thicknesses in the right places, you know, and you need to have the right folds in the right places to take the forces. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, so I'm impressed um, from a production point of view. Um, but, you know, this is where it kind of gets me, like, you know, as a designer, you know, putting out a chair for 77 euros, which can be manufactured at, you know, at the rate of one per minute. Um, is that really the sort of thinking that we need in 2020? You know, like people have been like mass producing chairs for a long time. Right. You know, um, the thing that irks me the most is like, it's, it doesn't really consider, um, the sustainability dimension at all, you know, it's yeah, injection molded plastic, uh, you know, let's say he sells a million of these, right? That's another million massive bits of plastic that are just going to be sitting around, you know, uh, in the, in the dump at some point, you know, for the next thousand years. I don't know. Maybe it's a very dark perspective. Like, yes, I appreciate the design. I'm sure it's damn comfortable. Uh, and it's, I'm really impressed with the process that he would have gone to, to get this and create this thing. But then I think as designers in 2020, now we really do need to think of the life cycle of the things that we create. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit, you know, for, for such a prominent designer, it would have been great to see him take that sort of stance um, on it, to think beyond just the, the product itself. Yeah. He actually talks about the sustainability dimension about how when he was approached with this project, he hesitated mm -hmm. um, taking it on. Um, but he could justify it in in the in a very functional manner or ma aspect of recyclability of the materials that he uses and making everything about this hyper efficient in terms of the production cycle to the point that the red pellet that's custom designed for the chair, it's used in the factory and in the shipping. It's, you know, it's, that's as much a part of the design as the chair itself. Um, and, you know, the fact that it stacks at a 90 degree, or near 90 degree, so you can stack, I think, 12 or something chairs um, instead of it stacking on an angle where, it, you know, off center. But, even, even more than that, I feel like this could turn out to be one of the most, uh, I think this could turn out to be quite a sustainable chair, at least if I bought it. Because to most people, it's a plastic garden chair that looks slightly different to most people. But for the people in the know, again, you know, it's like um, the, the chair that, you know, King Henry sat on, you know, is more valuable in history and in the present than if nobody sat, nobody of any mentions kind of sat on it. You know, a Stradivarius violin, right, is more valuable because the guy made it, right? Even if someone reproduces something like the exact Stradivarius violin, it's not to down to the atoms it's not going to be as valuable as the one ma made by the man himself. So oh, look, for me, Hans, yeah. I, I just want to say like, by that rationale, there were not hundreds of thousands of Stradivariuses made. You couldn't make a Stradivarius at one per minute. You know what I mean? Because he could it. <laughs> but if he, no, but if he made a mass manufactured version of the Stradivarius, right? So for me, right? Because again, like, I know the story behind this and like a top industrial designer of our time has made such a chair, right? And a plastic chair 
if taken care of, can last hundreds of years. It's just that people throw it away or it breaks somewhere, right? So as long as it's not made cheaply, right, and you combine it with the element of, you know, like where it came from, right? If I bought this chair, it would probably last me, it could probably last generations for something that only took two minutes to make, you know? And for, in my books, and that's fully recyclable, right? In my books, that's pretty sustainable. But again, if someone bought this as a random garden chair and they're going to throw it out after a couple of years, sure, you know. But, you know, it's like a plastic bag you could use, not all plastic bag, not the real cheap ones that, you know, that's like made of tissue. Um, but, you know, plastic bags you could reuse hundreds of times. It's just that people don't, right? So how do you make something that people do want to use over and over again right and this chair potentially has quite a lot more of whatever you know makes a product that than ordinary um 30 dollar plastic chair from you know kmart and i don't buy it <laughs> I don't buy it. I really appreciate Krishna's objectivity. Oh. Yeah. Like, I, I understand the, the energy. And that's what I said, you know, when I initially spoke. Like, I'm, I'm really impressed that he was able to bring that prediction, production time down to a minute. You know, that's that's really impressive. And that's master craftsmanship you know he really understood the material he un really understood the process and that's a master designer only only someone of that capability can do this um you know the fact that there's a big assumption here that everyone that buys a chair is a hans when in reality it's not going to be you know there's a big proportion of people who are not going to be hanses you know, who, who are going to pass this down to their children uh, and, you know, use it for 150 years. Like it's, it, you know, that's a massive assumption, um, especially if it's been purchased for $77 or euros, whatever, you know. So just saying like, um, yeah. Yeah, it's inevitably going to end up in places where we don't want it to end up. And especially given the issues that we're facing now uh, as a planet, yeah, that's my sort of take on it.